Hi guys, I'm going to show you a few things about energy. So we've been learning about energy, but now we're going to talk about energy forms or forms of energy. So here we have, uh, we've discussed like two main groups, potential and kinetic. Kinetic motion, potential stored energy. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven types or forms of energy that we will be discussing today. First, let's dig into potential. Okay, so within potential energy, there are four types. Four types, mechanical, chemical, gravitational, and nuclear. You already know about gravitational, so that is one less thing that you need to really learn. The first thing we're gonna talk about is mechanical energy. Uh, mechanical energy, it depends on the position and motion of an object. So as this cat is moving in a wheel, it has mechanical energy. Chemical energy is stored energy in atoms. So as an example here, this is the stored energy within a battery. A battery has stored energy because it doesn't constantly push out electrons all day. It has to be connected to something as this, like as a wire, so it can distribute electrons and shed its power. The next part is gravitational, which you're very familiar with. This is stored energy based on an object's position. So this is really specific because it's only based on the position. The greater the height, the more potential it has, as you can see from this GIF. And the last type of potential energy is nuclear energy. So nuclear energy, let me move my head. <laughs> nuclear energy is, you think of, if you see the word nuclear, you can think of it as nucleus because this involves the nucleus of an atom. There are two types of uh, potential things that can happen uh, within the atom. Like the nucleus could pull apart or the atom could pull apart, causing a fission. If it pulls apart, it releases heat. It's a big bang. And then things go spraying up all over the place. That's the heat, the heat, the heat, and the other particles. The next one is fission, when actually things combine and combust together. That still creates like this, this like, you see, if you saw, you saw that little particle, you hardly see it. But it's a small little beam it collides and then that explosion happens. That's actually, this is fusion when things connect and collide. That's actually what happens on the surface of the sun. Fusion, nuclear uh, energy, nuclear fusion constantly happens on the surface of the sun. That's why you have those solar rays that you see being emitted all over here, those little dancing waves that are on the surface of the sun. Okay, so that was all potential energy. There are one, two, three, four t essential forms of potential. Um, as you can see here, mechanical is both potential and kinetic. So we'll get into that. But let's move on to kinetic energy examples. So there's mechanical, electrical, thermal, and radiant energy. Mechanical, again, is position and motion. So the reason that mechanical is both kinetic and potential is because of the position, which is more potential, and the motion is more kinetic. But it needs both to be pursued as mechanical energy, to be classified as mechanical. So this cat is at the bottom of the wheel, the motion, it is moving, but it is stagnant. So as you can see, it has both that potential and kinetic energy playing that tag game in and out. The next one here is electrical energy, which you know a bit about because when we discuss the currents, it's the movement of electrons. See that word move? Movement of electrons from one to the other. That is electrical energy through the circuit. The next one uh, is thermal energy. So as you can see here, each living being has heat within us, thermal energy. We have a temperature. We get our temperature checked at school if you come to school every day. We get our temperature checked at the doctor's office or if we feel sick just in case we have a fever. So this heat is caused by the movement of atoms. 
when you're heat, when you have a fever, it's actually because the atoms are moving at a rapid pace because they're trying to go to a specific part of the body to try and heal it. The fever is actually a good thing because it senses a virus and senses a bacteria in your body that is trying to fight. So your body's working really hard for that. So if you have a fever, let the fever sit for a little bit before you take any like Motrin or Tylenol or whatever you take to suppress the fever. So this is also atomic movement, thermal energy. Last but not least is radiant energy. This type of energy is also called light energy because there it's involved in the electromagnetic spectrum. You see how they're all kind of interrelated? Electricity, magnetism, you've learned this before so you know there are actually waves within electromagnetism, like radiant energy. These waves are emitted from like, if we want to get a phone call and we have all the lines, all the rays, all the satellites, they're coming toward us. That is also involved in radiant energy. Your computer, it emits that radiant energy because uh, of the radiation. Your microwaves, if you have microwaves, they emit a type of wave, a type of radiation. Uh, the sun emits a type of radiation, ultraviolet radiation. This is actually an x-ray which uses the electromagnetic spectrum to see inside a, a being. So here we see a, a, a snake uh, trying to consume an egg, right? It's slowly trying to ingest it and move it through its body. So overall, that is it for energy. Remember there are, we discussed, this is one of your question, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven types, seven types of energy forms that we are discussing here. And make sure that you take those notes and read some more about these types of energy. Awesome, thanks guys. I am going to pause this here. And other than that, that is it.